What's up YouTube? Liz here from the Detroit Grooming Company and today I have a very special guest with me. You might recognize him from our live stream back in February. He was a guest on our podcast and today I would like to welcome Mr. Ryan Dedeker. Welcome Ryan. Well thank you Liz. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I appreciate it. So Ryan is the founder of Forefathers Grooming in Sterling Heights, Michigan. He is a member of our Detroit Grooming Society, which is our team of professional affiliates. He is a born educator, he is a master stylist, and dare I say, a motivational speaker. Can I say that, Ryan? You may, absolutely. You can say whatever you want, and it's pretty heavy. You have to yes. live up to all that. Yes, well, I, I, think, to I think you're going to do good. So, Ryan, uh, today we are going to jump into how barbers and stylists can make some more money behind the chair when it comes to product sales. Yes, today yes. we're going to be teaching you how to make money with knowledge. All right, let's jump right into it. Oh, finger gun. Tell me what you uh, find when you talk to new barbers. So that's actually what I was just gonna say because the biggest thing that I hear from people, especially when they're fresh out of school, right, is that I'm not a salesperson. Yeah. Or they're literally just terrified in general on product. Because a lot of schools, I mean, we are lucky, we went to Paul Mitchell, right? Right. And we learned a lot about the how, the why, um, you know, just the whole science of like how to sell products and why you're selling it to people. But a lot of schools don't do that, especially barber schools. I don't feel like they get into products at all. A lot, they, well, yeah, a lot of times it doesn't happen because they're just doing like clipper yes. over comb method or clipper just with guard method. Yes. And a lot of the haircuts are shorter. Mm -hmm. So you don't have much styling. Exactly. So that's what I wanted to ask you, because you get new stylists and barbers coming to work for you at your yeah. shop, right? Yeah. Um, what kind of advice do you give them when they say, like, I'm not a salesperson, or like... I love that argument, because <laughs> a lot of times we don't enjoy what we fear the most, mm. okay? So like, in hair, yeah, in hair, we're not good at hair when we first start. Of course. So when I was in school, I did like the special effects makeup, you know, yes. with the tissues oh, and yeah. stuff like that. And I ended up winning a hair show with that. Amazing. So I was like, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a special effects artist, you know. Yes. And then the color, like I was not good at color. Oh, so you're like, well, I hate it anyway. I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Same thing goes with product. I wasn't good at selling products, so I'm like, yeah, I really, I don't want to be salesy. Yes. It's super salesy. Well, it doesn't have to be salesy. Yeah. If you know, I fell in love with, with product and retail after I came back to work for them. And that was because I twisted it into a different light. Instead, I just became more knowledgeable yes. on what I'm selling, yes. and then in turn, it's no longer selling. All I'm doing is educating my clients. That's so it. we spin that with our new uh, hires and our new team members to make it so that we're not selling anything. I want you, I'm going to take all these products and you're going to learn every single piece of information there is to know about these. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to play with it, you're going to use it, you're going to learn how it styles. Then all of a sudden they don't they don't even sell anymore. It just, just becomes oh, second you, nature. Yeah, you know yes. what my favorite product is? Matte Mud. And what two things yep. about that can you share with your client? A lot of times we'll do into like the, the information overload where we just give them a rundown of the back. Like, oh, it has Agua Petrolatum Lanolin VPVA Copolymer uh, PVP. And You'll see the, the client, as soon as you start to like overload them, they just go white Checked in the face. Out. And, yeah. yeah, and yep. they shut down. And you're like, well, what did I do? I'm just telling them about the product. Yeah. Tell them like how it actually works mm -hmm. and just a couple of things that will help them with the product. I love that. And you know what I noticed, too, with a lot of new stylists? They skip the most important step, which is actually just telling them what they're utilizing. Yeah. I mean, so many times I've seen it in the salon or a barbershop where they go, they grab the product, they slap it on, they don't say, they don't even say. Not a word. Just the simple, yeah. hey, I'm using putty on you today. I mean, that's literally the first step, right? Even if we don't yeah. 
you know, go into all the details about the ingredients and the benefits and the features and all of that. Just, just start by just saying, this is what I'm using on you right. today. It's, it's sometimes it's that simple to, you know, to get somebody to purchase a product. Absolutely. I think a key point that we skip over too is not um, talking about it within the chair. I like to ask questions. Mm -hmm. That's they always say like great leaders ask questions, yes. right? Great salespeople ask questions. Yeah. Great coaches ask questions. All we get to do is find the answer out of them. So we're not pushing anything anymore yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. So my favorite thing to do, as you said, is just introduce the product. What are we using? So what I do is I use multiple senses and I'll grab like a matte mud. Mm -hmm. So I grab a matte mud. I say, this is matte mud. It's a stronghold matte finish. Go ahead and give that a whiff. Right. No, not really. Or <laughs> I'll put it in my hand and then I'll cup it yes. and have them get, a get the, the yeah. scent, right? Because when we warm it up, it smells so much better. Mm -hmm. Plus we're gonna use it anyway. Yeah. But once we do that, I'll explain to them also how to blow dry, how to style, how to recreate the look that I gave them and it's not a selfless act it's really not a lot of us don't we're afraid of being salesy and instead of using the product just that once where I don't teach them anything about the product I don't teach mm -hmm. how to apply it in their hair yep. I teach them absolutely everything I know because after they leave and once they wash it, on average, a person after they leave your shop, they're only going to wear the product for about four to six to eight hours. Okay. If I teach them everything I know and they purchase the product and they learn how to style it, your um, exposure time to that haircut now turns into two weeks mm -hmm. on average. So now they're walking billboard for me. Instead of four hours, they turn into two weeks, yes. two to three weeks, or until they return, right? Yep. And then they, the more you educate your client, the more they'll tell other people about it. I love it. And another um, argument that I hear a lot from stylists is they'll say to me, my clients aren't going to spend that kind of money. They're not going to spend $25 on a beard butter. What would you say to that? I would say, I would look into the camera or into their eyes and I would say, stop projecting your money problems onto your clients because you. that's exactly what you're doing. Yes. And I'm guilty. I'm totally guilty. Yes. yes. I feel like everybody in the industry is at one point guilty of that until they learn to overcome their money issues. Yes. Like I didn't, like raising your prices, same thing. Yeah. Oh. Clients are gonna leave me, they're not gonna pay it. Like, why are you projecting your problems onto them? It's so true. And that's not my decision to make, right? Sure. If I'm Absolutely. the stylist and I'm the one, you know, it's my job as the professional to inform my client and make sure I'm utilizing a product that I believe in, that performs, that, you know, it's, it's a great product. But, you know, it's not my job to decide how much money they wanna spend. It's just my job to be able to offer it yeah, and educate, educate, like you said, yeah. People will buy $7 a day Starbucks or energy drinks yeah. or whatever, and it's not your choice to make like what they wanna spend ridiculously in exactly. life, you know. And this actually, if you educate them and you help them learn on mm -hmm. how to style their hair, this will last them a couple to three months. Yeah. So if you break down the investment at $24 like per day, it's like 10 cents a day. Exactly. Or even less. And you know what, there's a statistic and I don't know it exactly off the top of my head, but it's something like once a, a, a client leaves your chair, like if they don't purchase product from you, I think it's within like 24 hours, they end up purchasing a product elsewhere. Mm, so I no, don't know that one. Yes, and I'm so sorry if I'm lying to everybody yeah. right now because I don't. <laughs> I don't Somebody's know. The, call us out. Yeah, I don't know the exact statistic, but um, I, I mean, I've done it myself. Where I've been in the salon, I got my hair done, and I was intimidated by my stylist or this really awesome, cool shop that I was in, and I, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable saying like, "Well, what did you use on me?" So right. I, I mentally took a picture of it, left, and went somewhere else to actually buy the product. 
I mean, oh. that's, and, but people do that all the time. Sure. Or, you know, a lot of times maybe the client just kind of forgets about it when they're going to check out and then they leave and go, oh crap, I forgot to, you know, get beard butter. So they run to the store and grab one from CVS. Yeah. So, and when they do that, they're purchasing something that might not fit their hair yes. or their hair type yep. or the style that they want. Yep. And I've seen that, I see that every single day yep. with new clients in our chairs. They'll be using something that's totally not what they want, yeah. but but it smelled good. Yeah. So that's what they gauge it on. They're sitting at, at like a, a big store and they're like, just smelling it. Yeah. Put the next yeah. one, let's try the next one. That's and that's it. how they're basing it. Yep. Cause it's really, it's a strong hold, medium hold, shiny or matte. You know, I just give them a couple options yeah. and when they pick those, that's what we go from. And it, a really good secret that I use with all of my loyal clients, I use a different product pretty much every single time they're, really? they're in the chair. Really? 100%. But why, why do I do that? Please, tell yeah. me more. Because it gives them options. Mm. I have one client who literally has every single Detroit grooming product, every other product that we carry. Yeah. He has just a huge collection of it because that's how he wants to spend his money. I love and he it. also loves options. Yeah. So... I will use like a shinier product or a medium hold uh, the first time and then I'll use a strong matte finish and give them options because when that. we give them options then all of a sudden they're like oh well maybe I should get another product yeah. or a different product and of course everything smells awesome yes. so it's like why not just give them an option. I love that. I've never even thought of that, but it makes so much sense. Now most that you of, yeah, it most that of way. them do that. Yeah. Well, because another tip that I give to like a newer stylist on the floor, I say like, I, I get it. A lot of shops have, you know, five, six, seven, eight different product lines. It sure. can be very overwhelming, you know, when you first get in and saying like, well, I don't even know where to start. And I say like, find that one or two products that you absolutely love and become an expert on those products and, and literally start there. I mean, I have had stylists that you know sometimes salons and shops will run like little contests and people will win and be, they literally sold the same product to you know 50 different people but they believe in it right. and they know how it works they're confident in it so for them it's like well I'm not really selling right just like going and back to yeah. the beginning of what we talked about well I don't feel like I'm selling it because I believe in it and it's I'm just using it on them so right. um, sometimes I tell people that too like just just find one or two that you love just to start out become an expert on that and then kind of grow from there I think that that's uh, the key point because if they were to learn about one to two products and become experts yeah what's to say that they can't learn about a third a fourth a fifth right. a sixth all the way down the line yes. right yep. and it doesn't have to be this overnight I'm gonna cram right and learn as much as I can about each product every single ingredient right. and um, a great thing that we're developing in our shop is a product knowledge workbook or a binder so yeah. every company gets you know their products listed yeah. and then we create key points Love or it. KPIs yeah. about each product that yeah. way we can quickly give a rundown of it and if they want to elaborate even further then they can right but otherwise it'll have a scent profile and some key points uh, that they can share with their client That's perfect. really quickly yeah, yeah. I love it Okay, so now, Ryan, I would love to dive into the actual, uh, a couple Detroit grooming products that you love, and maybe you can show us a little bit of how you would demonstrate this for your client and maybe talk about it a little bit. And again, these techniques, you guys, are really going to be for any product line. It's just kind of the comfortability and the, the flow that you get when you're actually, like, utilizing the product. So Absolutely. And I think that, like, I just find key things that that stick out to me with yeah. products. Mm -hmm. And these aren't like what uh, Detroit Grooming told me to say or says in their product knowledge right. um, pamphlet. It's, it's literally just some things that I noticed about the product. It reminds me of a different product from a different company or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, they ring true to actually show clients and, and have fun. Yeah. But like, we'll use fiber, medium hold, um, natural finish. So natural finish, maybe you can enlighten me on what a natural finish is to you. Yeah, so a natural finish is 
kind of uh, in between of like a high shine or like a matte product. So it's something that kind of, you know, it's self-explanatory. It's a little right. bit more of that like natural, right. natural shine, if you will. So it doesn't, it's more effortless, I guess, is a good way to put it. Okay. So it looks lived in. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. So a great key point I bring up to clients uh, and team members alike yeah. is the elasticity of fiber. Okay. I love it. And it smells like bubble gums. Okay. So you guys say it smells like bubble gums. To me, it's different than that. It's mm. a blue raspberry dum dum mm. uh, or a blow pop. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. But with this elasticity is what I show people that's fun is the, the fact that you can see it right on camera. You can literally see the fibers. Right. So I I do this yes. over a client's head yeah. and they're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is amazing. So I have them smell the product and yeah. then I'll I'll do something similar to that. Sometimes yeah. I'm in a rush. So I yeah. won't. And they're like, dude, it's everywhere. <laughs> uh, but it's a fun thing that I never knew existed until I played with the product. Yeah. But I always speak about attributes with the product. Yeah. So with that, you said it smells like bubble gum. I think it smells like blue raspberry dum dums yeah, or blow pop. Accurate. Yeah. So I'll tell the client about the scent of the product, and then I'll also uh, tell them what kind of hold and what kind of finish. For that natural finish, I yeah. feel like it. It looks like hair that's been lived in for a couple of days. Yeah. It's got like the natural oil look, yeah. but it's not greasy. Right. Um, with matte mud, I would, uh, it smells like coconut citrus. Yep. I think it smells like the islands. So I just joke and I'm like, oh, if you really want to feel like you're on vacation, this yeah. is a great summer scent along with being stronghold and a matte finish. This looks super natural, like you're not even wearing any product in yeah. your hair. But I always start out with putting half of a dime size before mm -hmm. and then half of a dime size after styling. A lot of our clients don't know, especially men, they don't know how to use a blow dryer because they've never been taught, right? Yeah. And they think, they see you with all your long hair and they're like, <laughs> She uses it for like half hour, 40 minutes to dry her hair, right? Yeah, that's true. And so we get intimidated. Yes. And we're like, I'm not spending that much time on my hair. I teach them a, a tips of 10 seconds a side. So it'll be 10 seconds up front, 10 on this side, 10 on this side, 10 on this side. We already have it towel dried. So yeah. it's going to be near 50 to 80% dry by yeah. the time we put some product in. Okay. If we just focus on the front for 10 seconds and 10 seconds, that's less than a minute. Yep. Yeah. And they get at least a look that's a finished look mm -hmm. with the blow dryer. But all we really want them to concentrate on is the front anyway. Right. So. The reason we put in half of the dime size before and half after, by the way, I still have product in my hand. Um, we set it just like long hair. So we're setting the hair with our product right. and you can cocktail two products together, meaning you can use a medium and a strong yeah. or a medium, medium, strong and strong. Mm -hmm. um, you typically don't want to go backward, but either way you guys can try it and see if it works. I love it. But we'll get them to set their hair so that it's not staticky. Then all of a sudden, all the hair s takes its shape and it doesn't create like the flyaways. It's not staticky. Everything holds in that shape. And then we'll finish with the other half of the dime size. I love it. Right? Yeah. I do too. <laughs> well, I think that's so great to your point. You know, um, a lot of clients just don't quite know how to utilize a product. So making that a part of the conversation of how to actually utilize it and not just sticking your finger in matte mud and then, you know. Don't talk to me. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like that. But your hands get stuck because it's a little bit of a thicker product and they just don't And realize. if it's super dry yeah. already, yes. it's, if you don't show a client how to apply it, like yep. I always uh, tell my client exactly what I'm doing with yes. it. I'm rubbing it on all my hands. This is the secret. All your hands. Go ahead, 
Yeah, all two of them. <laughs> all my fingers is what I meant. Uh, so I will rub it all the way around, and yeah. then my key point to show them is that I put it on the tips of my fingers. Now, why would I do this? I, and I ask them that. Yeah. So then I said, well, if we just separate those, they act as a comb and an even it. applicator. So then we're not having a ton on your palm. We'll go ahead and apply it evenly. Go ahead and put it through your hair. Mm -hmm. And then you can reapply to the fingers and do that same exact thing again until you're ready to finish. Yep, and you get that desired look. Yeah, I desire. Yes. Okay, Ryan, so we've gone over a lot of information. Yeah. Let's kind of uh, recap some of this for, sure. for all of our viewers out there on the YouTube. So I would say um, some main points or KPIs from what we talked about mm -hmm. were Every time you use a product or anything with your client, you should be sharing what you're using and keep it short and sweet. Pick out a couple of things with each product, Stronghold Matte Finish, uh, and this is how creamy the texture is, something like that, and share that with your client. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you should be asking questions the whole time about their routine, uh, what is their daily routine like so that you can best help them determine what products they may need. Yes. And by steering down this path and you're just asking questions, do you condition? How often? Do you use product? Do you go to the gym? Mm -hmm. That'll tell you if they like shower midday or like after the gym or something right. like that. Right. And they may not, they may need a different type of product. Yes. And then show them how you're styling with their hair and teach them a better way. I love it. One wise man once said that you should be your client's dinner conversation. I love that. So anything you teach them for that day, they should be able to sing from the mountaintops yes. or tell their family and tell their friends, like, look what my barber taught me. Yeah. Because I guarantee they will get compliments on how they look if you teach them how to uh, use products and recreate the look that you make in the chair. I was just going to say, giving a great haircut or a great beard trim or you know a great style is awesome, but you want your client to be able to recreate that at home. Right. And all of these things that we're talking about are going to help them be able to do that and make them a little more loyal client. What did you, what did you say earlier? Something about a happy client so loyal client. Yeah. Well, right? a happy client is. I think I it's, don't know. Is it's it? In, Look at your notes. notes. It's on. there. I swear it's there. You said it. Oh, an educated client is That's a it. loyal client. Brad, it's an educated client. Because the more they love you and the yeah. more they can't live without you, mm -hmm. the more often they're going to come back and see you and the more often they're going to sing your praises to the people around them, yes. which means they, everyone has a circle of influence. So yeah. if they affect their circle and so on and so forth, this gets you referrals in the door without having to advertise. They are a free advertisement wow. going out in the world for you. Walking billboards. Yes, there I you love go. It. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Would you please tell our viewers uh, where they can find you on social media and you know maybe the location of your shop? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can find me on social media at dapper.deeds, D-E-E-D-S. That's play off my last name. Which is? Dedeker. Dedeker. And it's very hard for people to say, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then our shop is at Forefathers Grooming, and that's also at forefathersgrooming.com. We have a shop in Sterling Heights. It's amazing, and we have a ton of product, and it's a really cool spot. Love it. Yeah. I love it too. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and then you can also hit the little bell to subscribe and get notified whenever we post a new video. So until next time, see you later YouTube. I did finger